Hey everybody, Daniel here for Rock the JVM, where it's usually my job to deconstruct and show you some awesome tips and tricks related to Scala, functional programming, related technologies, and all goodies on the JVM. Now, this video is a little bit different because I've just launched the Scala 3 and Functional Programming Essentials course. And I wanted to show this video in case you would find this course useful and I wanted to tell you what you can expect from it and how it can benefit you. Now, who is this for? I created this course on Scala 3 and Functional Programming Essentials for software engineers or people with at least some bit of experience with some other programming language and with some solid computer science fundamentals otherwise. So if you're just getting started with Scala and you know some other programming language or you have learned some Scala but you're curious to know if there are gaps in your understanding of Scala, this course is for you. And in this video, I just want to show you how the course is structured structured and how to approach it and where you can find it, or if this course is too simple, what you can do about it. So the code for the course and everything that we write on camera has a GitHub repository at github.com forward slash rock the JVM. So if you click on github.com forward slash rock the JVM, you'll find all the repositories for all the courses that I've made on the rock the JVM website and the Scala 3 beginners course or the Scala 3 and functional programming essentials course, the longer name is the repository where we write the code for this entire course. And if you're curious, you can download this whole code and explore the structure of the project for yourself. I'm also going to do that in this video. Now, what's pretty useful here in this GitHub repository, if you're a Git user, is that the repository is also tagged with intermediate states of the code because we have some longer exercises where we modify and refactor the same bits of code. So it's often useful to check out the intermediate tags for that particular state of the code. Of course, the repository contains the solutions to all the exercises, and in total, we write almost 3,000 lines of code from scratch. Now, if you're curious to explore this repository, you can also do that here on GitHub, or you can download and explore it in IntelliJ IDE. I also show you how to install the Scala IDE so that you can write code for yourself. Now, the course is structured into chapters, and each chapter will have a different package, and every package will have different Scala applications, one for each lesson. So all the lessons are deconstructed so that you can refer back to those particular concepts later. And we start from the very essentials. Now, I'm also going to assume that you have some computer science fundamentals. I'm not going to talk half an hour about what a variable is. And we start from the very beginning. We start with defining values and types and getting shocked that we will not think in terms of variables and instructions, but we're rather going to think in terms of expressions. So a functional program is an expression which computes a value. And I describe all sorts of expressions in the Scala syntax. And at the end of most lessons in the course, I'm going to give you some exercises, starting very easy at the beginning, but increasing in difficulty as we move along. So in the first chapter, we discuss the Scala fundamentals that we are going to use for the rest of this course and that you are going to frankly use for the entire time that you're going to write Scala. So we write expressions, we define functions and think in terms of recursion. So we are going to think in terms of recursion instead of repetition. And I'm also going to teach you all the techniques that you need to know to use recursion properly, including tail recursion, which avoids stack overflows in case we have lots of recursive calls. And notice that I break down all the exercises and all the scenarios that you might need whenever the code seems confusing at first sight. By the way, all the comments that you see here in the code, everything was written on camera. So I write all this code with you starting from nothing so that you follow an entire journey. I'm never going to give you a piece of code and then start reading that code and explaining it to you. I'm writing the code with you in this entire course. So in part one, we discuss the Scala basics that we are going to use for the duration of the course. And then we start diving into object-oriented programming in Scala. Now you might be surprised because Scala is being sold as a functional programming language, but in truth, Scala blends object-oriented programming and functional programming quite well. So we are going to describe object-oriented programming in this chapter, including objects, classes, inheritance, generics, 
enums case classes, which are a very useful Scala feature and inspired Java records, by the way, and lots of other tips and tricks that you can use in your day-to-day -day Scala job or in whatever project you're working on that requires Scala. So part two is also incredibly useful for every single bit of code that you will end up writing in Scala. After that, we dive into functional programming, which is the main goal of the course, because the course wants to teach you not only how to write the Scala syntax, but rather how to think in terms of functional programming. And with that, I'm going to start describing what the functional programming ideal is and how Scala can't be implemented as a functional programming language on top of the JVM, which was built for Java, one of the canonical object-oriented languages in existence. So I'm going to start by describing what a function actually is from Scala's perspective, and then start describing the functional programming primitives and concepts on top of this idea. So after we find out what a function actually is and how it's implemented by Scala on top of the JVM, we start going into the principles of functional programming. So we start writing functions and operating with them like we do on any other kinds of values. So we start describing anonymous functions, higher order functions, the big and most popular three, map, flat map, filter, and four comprehensions, which are expressions, not looping in Scala. And you will find out, and it's going to be extremely natural for you to understand four comprehensions at this stage. And then we will start abstracting away other concepts, such as the absence of values in terms of options, and handling failure with the try data structure. Also in this chapter, we explore some of Scala's standard library in terms of collections. So we operate on linear collections such as sequences, lists, arrays, vectors, ranges, sets, and so on. And we also describe tuples and maps because you're going to basically use them all the time. So this is the chapter of functional programming. After that, in the final chapter of the course, we describe pattern matching, which is one of Scala's most powerful features. So in pattern matching, I show you how pattern matching came to be as a switch on steroids, and then we move on to more complex cases where we deconstruct data, not just match some particular values. So I'm going to describe everything that you need to know in order to work with pattern matching. And at the same time, I'm also going to show you how pattern matching is actually ubiquitous in the Scala programming language without you being even aware of that. This is one of the lessons in this course that many Scala developers actually do not know. Even as I run into corporate trainings with people with some Scala experience, they weren't aware that the code structures that they were using was actually based on pattern matching. And the same thing happens with some other concepts in this course. And after we're done with pattern matching, I'm finally going to show you imperative programming. So programming in terms of variables, loops, and mutable data the structures. And I left this at the end by design because people tend to come into this course with an imperative programming background, for example, in Python or in Java or JavaScript or C or things of that nature. So I want you to start thinking differently throughout this entire course. And only at the end, I'm going to show you variables, loops, and things that you can also do in Scala that you can do in other languages. But at this point, my hope is that you won't even need these concepts any longer. And at the same time, I'm also going to show you braceless syntax, which was was introduced in Scala 3 specifically. So Scala 2 does not have this particular syntax. And this caused quite a bit of contention inside the Scala community. And I'm only going to show you this alternative syntax for you to choose your own preferred style. And in general, throughout the entire course, I show you trade-offs and alternatives and discuss the pros and cons for each, and then for you to choose in practice. And speaking of practice, we also have some longer exercises here to write some algorithms. We implement our own linked list in the style of the Scala standard library and so on. So this was at a glance, the structure of the Scala 3 beginners project. Now, if you're interested in taking this course, you can go to rockthejvm.com and this Scala course will probably be the first one to pop up, or you can click the link in the description, or you can type in rockthejvm.com forward slash course forward slash Scala and you will get to this page where I'm also going to describe all the benefits that you get if you enroll in this course. You also have some of the videos for free preview if you're interested in seeing my teaching style. 
And at a glance, the benefits of the course will look something like this. So at the moment, we have 40 lessons which are carefully deconstructed and sequenced for a smooth learning curve. And in total, we have 13 hours of high quality video and almost 3000 lines of code that I write on camera from scratch. Also, if you sign up for this course, you'll also have some automatic exclusive access to the Rock the JVM private community with people just like yourself. And in this community, we share lots of material about Scala and functional programming and lots of other tools based on the JVM, including big data and conferences and job offers and discussions and so on and so on. So if you sign up for this course, all the updates are free. So if you buy this course once, I'll always keep it up to date with no extra charge and you have lifetime access with no expiration date. Now, if this course is too expensive for you, you have some cheaper options in the form of the monthly membership, which gives you access to everything on the site for a lot less per month, and also the Scala Bundle or Masterclass, which is a pack of the Scala Beginners course, the Scala Advanced course, and the Functional Programming Interview Practice course, which is very, very useful if you want to apply for a job. So if you want to check those options out, you can navigate to rockthejvm.com and you can scroll down. You have advanced Scala. We have Scala and functional programming interview practice with algorithms and this Scala bundle or masterclass if you choose to take all of them at a pack and at a massive discount. And if the Scala Beginners course is too simple for you, we have the Advanced Scala course, which dives into the depth of Scala, including its type system. And if that's too easy, you can dive into more complex stuff, including Cats and Cats Effect, into Apache Spark or Akka. I have entire series here and masterclasses for those technologies as well on the site at this moment. So I hope this video is useful and I'm waiting for you in the course.